Okay, this is a continuation of the Emotip radian oscillator with uh, some modifications. I went to a 100 watt CFL as a daylight. It is a, a full spectrum daylight bulb that uh, gives a white light out, which is better for this application. And I'm driving this through a 2 watt solar panel for input energy. I'm going into a 5 amp per hour 12 volt lead acid battery into a 24 amp per hour lead acid battery, sealed battery, that's being charged by the collapsing field of those ignition coils, their car ignition coils. The trigger is this relay that causes the fields to collapse. Now I did a modification. I put this 680 ohm resistor where this 15 turn 1K pot was. There's the diagram of where it goes. Uh, some of the people are having trouble finding this part here. Uh, you just have to hunt around for it, but this does help if you can find it. But it does work with a 680 ohm resistor put in that relay there. The other thing that I've done is I've tried Mart Hale's uh, bulb, and it works quite well as a ballast resistor basically. And I'm using it with the rheostat, and it does help the heating and it, the control is much better. Plus, I wired in the other wire. This is a two filament bulb so you basically have a two brightness uh, system. If you want to attach the other filament in there you have a two wire system or two brightness system. This was the big news right here though. I found out that if you put a fairly large capacitor between the bulb and the negative coming off the battery, this is the negative lead that comes into the, the relay, you increase the brightness and you cut down on the chatter that comes out of the relay. The other thing that I've discovered is that um, some of the guys are noticing that this thing does not draw very much. Uh, I think Peter Lindemann says that it's about 20 milliamps is all that CFL is drawing out of the system and I concur with my experimentation is there's very little draw from that CFL most of the the uh, current draw is just going through this system here and of course it's going into that back battery there. Let me turn it on to show you what's going on. This is the rheostat, this is the positive lead coming off the battery. And look at how weak that light is there. I'll turn it on or off a couple times. Okay, this is off, on, off, on. And it does work and at night it's pretty bright of course and I can dim it up and down with the rheostat here. Now another thing I'm doing here is I've got an amp meter that is uh, non-digital to show the amperage draw because the digital amp meters give a kind of a phony reading on them. So I've got that in there and you can see that thing isn't drawing hardly anything at all. Later on I'll show you a little bit more draw on it. But let me adjust this about where you'd want it right there. Now notice the brightness on the bulb. If I connect this capacitor across to the negative lead on the battery, look at the brightness. See if I can pan back here. And it also quiets down that relay. You notice nothing happened on the amp draw. It just made a brighter bulb. Now I can adjust that up and down with the rheostat again, just as before. You can see how little the amp draw is. I mean, it's, it's, you can't even hardly see it. This is probably drawn 300 milliamps, maybe, with that brightness of bulb. What I'm doing, I'm charging this back battery while this is going on. Now you'll notice the voltage drops down and goes up as I adjust the rheostat. So I'm putting a load on this. So what I'm going to do here is one more thing. I'm going to add in the other filament to the system here. And watch the bulb go up. Now I'm going to crank this up till I get about an amp draw. You see that thing comes on real bright. Now I'm drawing about 
about an amp right there and that's pretty much full brightness on that bulb if this was dark you'd really see it but uh, that's coming on bright now also notice Mark's uh, bulb uh, glows when you start pulling a load on it it'll glow so if you dial this down to that just kind of goes off you see that the amperage goes down to about I don't know 750 milliamps to 500 milliamps I'll put this about 500 milliamps now here's where it gets real interesting take a look at that voltmeter and take a look at the ammeter and I'm going to turn the light off turn it on and turn it off and that's voltage on the drive battery look at the amps Now, several of the other experimenters, the replicators, are noticing this, and this is the first time I noticed it. That CFL is really not pulling out that much load. Uh, it's being driven by very little current, um, especially when you balance this thing up. But this is charging. This is charging up the back battery at the same time that that solar panel out there is charging up the drive battery. So what you got, you got a double whammy. You got a charging thing going on there with the small solar panel, and you've got charging going on the back end of the system, and you're getting light. So anyway, this is a, a tremendous uh, design that's being refined by everybody. And this was the biggest thing I saw here was this capacitor. It's a 400 and uh, 4,700 microfarad 35 volt cap, and watch watch the light when I take it out. There it goes down, there it goes in, there it goes down, there it goes in. And that goes between the uh, light bulb, Mark's light bulb, and the negative coming off the battery. And uh, that's a tremendous help. Now most of the heat now is gone out of this system. We were having real heating problems. Uh, when we did this to it, the heat just went bye-bye. And like I say, if you just put a 680 ohm resistor across the rheostat there, and these little neomagnets are very important. If you don't have those in the right spot, this thing won't work. Uh, I don't know what we're going to do about that. Maybe crazy glue them on there. But uh, that's where they go. Anyway, that Emo Teep radiant oscillator, it's coming together. It sure is.